This lecture will be a mixture of a tutorial and an exercise to look into more detail on the algorithms for creating the multiple sequence alignment and then using that alignment to create a, a phylogenetic tree. So we're going to start with the multiple sequence alignment. This will be a, a progressive alignment based on Clustal but simplified uh, so without, without all those heuristics for, for fine-tuning and optimization. And then we're going to use uh, UPGMA uh, starting from the distances between sequences in the multiple sequence alignment to create a phylogenetic tree and export it into NEWIC format. So uh, let's start first by uh, looking at the alignment of two sequences using the resolution of last week's exercise. So. Uh, we will assume that we will create this module here uh, for the needleman wunsch algorithm. So NW underscore align will be the name of the module with the Python extension. And this will be uh, what we did last week to align two sequences. So the global alignment algorithm. We started with this uh, very simple function for scoring the match or mismatch between two nucleotides. So uh, basically, uh, we, we intended this to align sequences of DNA, but we will now adapt it for proteins. But this was just a, a simple placeholder function that returned one if the residues were equal or minus one if they were different. But we will ignore this one and use a, a different one for our purposes now. But we can assume that this one is still remains in the, the original module. Uh, we also have this function to compute the matrix with the scores and the matrix with all the, the moves that we make so that we can backtrace. Uh, these two matrices start uh, with the number of rows equal to the length of the first sequence plus one and the number of columns equal to the length of the second sequence plus one. So this is the matrix for computing the scores. Since this is a global alignment, we will start by filling in the first row with the gap uh, penalty increasing along the row and the same thing for the first column. So remember this is uh, uh, corresponds to uh, discarding part of the beginning of one of the sequences and filling with uh, uh, gaps uh, that's part of the alignment. Uh, so then we fill in the, the um, uh, matrix by considering the two po uh, three possible moves. So we start from the, the second row and second column and all the way to the end and we consider the previous cells uh, the one on the, the left, the one on the top, uh, so sorry, the one on the top, the one on the left, and uh, the one in diagonal by matching the two um, um, residues. And so if we go down or if we go right, we have a gap penalty. If we go on the diagonal, we match the two of them and we use the match function to score the match between the two. Note that this function can be the one we created last week, or it can be a different function. As long as we provide a function that can receive the two uh, characters, the two symbols, and return the score, uh, it will work here. So now we put on, the, on this position in the scores matrix the maximum of uh, the, the three possibilities, and we register on the same position of the moves matrix a value that is zero if the best move was going down, one if the best move was going right, and two if the best move was uh, in the diagonal, so matching the two. And this we can get by using argmax on this tuple. So argmax will tell us the index with the maximum value here. And now we return to the two matrices. So we have a matrix with all the scores for the sub alignments and the matrix with all the corresponding moves. This allows us, the second matrix allows us to trace back the, uh, the alignment. So we have the two original sequences and we have the matrix with the moves. So we start uh, on the last row and last column. So the, the row 
with the total number of, col of uh, rows minus one is the index for the last row. This is the index for the last column. And uh, uh, as long as we don't reach uh, zero on both of them, we will check the moves that we made. So if the move was zero, that is was going right, now we move to the left and we uh, uh, add to the second alignment uh, string uh, a gap because we are not using this sequence, but we are using the other sequence. Uh, so, uh, sorry, the zero is going uh, down. So we trace back by going up, by moving up in the, the rows. And so we uh, consume part of the first sequence, the one that is on the vertical here. But the second sequence, we uh, will match it with a gap because we are not using, uh, we will uh, put a gap there in that alignment sequence because we are not using a character on the top sequence since now we are moving up. The same thing if we move uh, to the right, to the left. So uh, this move one was when we were filling the matrix and move to the right. Now, as we trace back, we move to the left. So we use one uh, character from the, uh, the sequence that is on top, but we do not use char a character from the sequence one, which is the one here in the, the vertical. Uh, and uh, that one for that alignment uh, sequence, we will add the gap. If we are moving on the diagonal, then we'll move both of them and in each case, we also uh, change the value of the, the row or column or both if we go on the diagonal. So basically what this function does is starting from the last cell on the moves matrix, we'll uh, trace back all the moves all the way to the beginning. And depending on each move, it will put uh, a character or a, a dash mark on uh, each of the, the sequences. So now to compute the alignment, we uh, receive the, the two sequences, the gap penalty and the function for, for uh, matching the residues. We compute the two matrices using that uh, function, global matrix. Now we compute the two alignments with the, the traceback function and we return the two alignment strings uh, for the alignment and uh, the score, which is the last cell of the scores matrix. This gives us the global score. So for example, if we have these two sequences, uh, we uh, call the alignment function and this returns the three uh, strings here. So this would be the first alignment string, which is just this first sequence. This is the, the second alignment string, which is the uh, sequence two, but with the gaps uh, there. And this is the score for this particular alignment. Okay, so this is what we had from last week. We're going to use it now to do the multiple sequence alignment because we will have to align pairs of sequences, whether the actual sequences or consensus sequences in multiple sequence alignments. Another thing that we need is to read some files in order to uh, align these proteins properly. So we're going to use the, the Blossom uh, 62 matrix you can download it from here or I'll also post it on the on the course website. And this is a, a text file that has some header uh, lines here that start with this cardinal sign. So there are more of them, uh, but they describe the file and so on. And we can skip them. And then we have the actual table, which has the, the codes, one letter codes for the 20 residues and then has some special codes here. For example, B is uh, either asparagine or aspartate, so uh, not distinguishing the two, Z for glutamine or glutamate and X for any uh, amino acid. There's also this star here for the termination codon. We are not going to use that one, but this X will be useful because this is um, what the this uh, scoring matrix will uh, use when we don't know what the amino acid residue is. So uh, any type can be in this position. And this will be good for the, those positions where we do not find consensus. We will mark with an X and so we don't know what residue can appear in that position. So we need to read this uh, um, uh, table from the file and uh, we can start our new 
uh, module for the multiple sequence alignment by importing uh, NumPy. We're going to use that for, for all those, those arrays. Uh, from the needleman wunsch alignment module, the NW align we saw previously, we're going to import the align function so that we can uh, compute the global alignment between two sequences. And we're also going to need the mode function from SciPy stats because this one will help us find uh, the consensus uh, symbol in any column of a multiple sequence alignment. So what we're going to do here is load the, um, uh, this table and store two uh, structures, a list with uh, all the, the amino acid residue codes in order and a NumPy array, a two-dimensional array, a matrix, with all these values here. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to read all the lines in the file. Uh, we're going to go through, loop through the lines, skipping all that start with cardinal because these are the, the headers there. So if uh, the line does not start with cardinal, we're going to split it. And when you use split with no arguments, it splits every time it, it encounters white space. So it can be tabs, spaces, uh, new line, whatever. Uh, and this allows us to split all of those, creates a list and uh, we will append to this list of cells. So this will be a list of lists where each of the innermost list corresponds to uh, a row in this file by splitting all of these elements uh, into a list. And now the, the index for finding the position of each residue type will simply be the first uh, uh, line of cells here, which will correspond, which will contain all of these characters, A, R, N, so forth. The, the other thing that we need is um, a, a matrix with the values for all of these uh, uh, substitutions. So basically we will use all of the rows in this matrix that skips the first uh, row of cells here. So we skip this one and we create a NumPy uh, array with all of this information. This will be a NumPy array of strings because of these letters here. But then we can do this. We can use all the rows and discard the first column so that we only have the numbers and change the type to float, which are uh, numbers with decimal points and return this matrix here. So basically, if you use this to read the, the Blossom62 file, this file here, um, we can uh, um, obtain these uh, structures. One is the list with the index of the, the residue codes and the other is an array, a NumPy array with all of those values. So now we can create a, a new function for matching uh, the, the residues according to this Blossom62 matrix, which given two uh, amino acid residue codes, it will find the index of uh, each of them in this uh, 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 list here. So if you use the index um, methods on a list, it will tell you the index of the first occurrence of this element in the list. And now we can look up the matrix on these coordinates with the two indexes to see the substitution value. So now when we call a line, uh, we can call a line because we imported it here. We imported it from the other module. But now we're going to give it this function. We're still going to use minus two for the, the gap penalty, but we're going to use this function uh, for uh, uh, the match score instead of using the original one that was just a, a very simplified version. Okay, another thing that we're going to need is to read all the sequences. We're going to do a multiple sequence alignment on a set of cytochrome C sequences from different species. So these, these sequences are stored in a FASTA file. With these formats, we have a, a, a greater than sign here to indicate that we have a new sequence, and this is the name. And we have then um, the codes for the amino acid residues in that sequence. And then we have a new sequence and so on. So to read this, we can read all the lines in the file. 
we start with the, the sequences and names list empty. And now for each line, we're going to clean the line of uh, empty spaces and new lines and things like that at the end. And if the line starts with this character, we are going to append the, the line starting from the second character to the name so that we discard that uh, greater than sign there. And we're going to append to the sequences a new sequence that is still empty because we are going to fill it with the next line. If uh, the line does not start with uh, this character, then it's one of these sequences line and we're going to uh, uh, concatenate the last sequence on our list with the line that we have here. Uh, so basically, we are going. We when we find the name, the last sequence will be empty. We'll create the last sequence empty. But then, when we find the sequence, we will uh, concatenate this uh, with the sequence that is there. And when we find this one, we will concatenate this too. So it will uh, increase the string and to contain all the sequence, even if it's split into different lines. So we can test this, uh, we load this uh, uh, fast file with the cytochrome sequences. We have the, the different names here, this is a list of strings, and we have the, the different sequences also. This is a, a, another list of strings with all the sequences. Now one small problem here is that these names are a bit confusing. They have the, these codes for the protein and the cytochrome C and then the, the name of the species. And also if we use these very complicated names in some software to um, view the NAWIC format tree, we have problems with these spaces. So we're going to fix this by extracting only the species name and replacing the space with an underscore so that we don't have problems with the, the names with spaces. And this is the function that does that. So it receives the list of the names. It's going to split uh, by the, uh, the open uh, of the square brackets and take the last part of the split. So if you imagine splitting here, it will break into the first segment and the last segment. And so we take this segment here. But then we're going to split again through the closing brackets and take the first segment. This is a, a general trick that you can use when you want a part of a string that is between two delimiters. You split on the first delimiter, take the last part, and then split again on the last delimiter and take the first part uh, of the split. And now we're going to append this to the species names after replacing the space with the underscore. So we load the names and the sequences from the FASTA files, and then we clean up the species names, and this is uh, the set of names that we get. Okay, so this is just the setup. We have the functions for aligning two sequences. We have the functions to read the files that we need, and now we can move on to actually implementing the multiple sequence align. So let's first think of the data structures that we're going to need. We will need a distance matrix to give us the guide tree uh, in order to follow the correct order of uh, uh, aligning sequences. So we will need something like this that is going to measure the number of differences between sequences after aligning with the, the global alignment algorithm. After we do all the pairwise alignment, we can compute the number of differences and this will tell us where to start. For example, we should start with these that are close together. Remember that the zero in the diagonal is the distance between each sequence to itself. This does not matter. But we have sequences here that are close together, then others that are a bit more different and so on. So we're going to follow uh, follow the UPGMA algorithm. We're going to follow from the, the closest ones first. And this will be one of the data structures we need. We need a NumPy array, uh, two-dimensional, to have all the distances between all the pairs of the, the sequences that we have. Then we're going to need to keep track of all the multiple sequence alignments that we have computed. Because we're going to start with individual sequences, but when we find a, a, a set a pair of sequences that are very similar, for example, sequence of index 0 with index 1, 
we are going to join these two. So we need to uh, join these two sequences together. And that means that we're going to create a multiple sequence alignment with these two sequences aligned. And uh, so in order to keep the multiple sequences align uh, alignments that we have computed so far, we're going to need a list for all of these alignments, but each element of the list will have to be another list of strings that contain the multiple sequence alignment. So it's basically a, a list of lists of strings will be the data structure that we need to store all the multiple sequences alignment. It will be initialized as a, a list of lists where each of these lists will just have the original sequence. So when we start, we have the original sequences. Uh, each multiple sequence alignment here will actually just be a single sequence. But as we start merging together different sequences going along the, the distance matrix, we need to create these lists of aligned sequences, which uh, describe the multiple sequence alignment for all of those sequences so far. Another thing that we're going to, to need is uh, also the names of the species, uh, of the different sequences that we have, because uh, when we uh, join, for example, these first two together, because they are very similar, we will not only need to create a, an alignment with the two sequences for the multiple sequence alignment, but we need to remember which uh, uh, sequences, the names that they were. So in this case, the first two are Homo sapiens and, and pantroglodytes, the chimpanzee, and we need to remember that these were put together in this order so that we know that this sequence here corresponds to the human and this one to the chimpanzee and actually this one will then later be added uh, i'm not sure what this one is maybe a lemur or something like that but we need to keep track of all of these names um, in order to uh, re remember what is the name for each sequence when at the end for example we want to do the the phylogenetic tree so the names will also be lists of lists of strings uh, so that we can keep joining them together. And then for each multiple sequence alignment, we will also need a consensus uh, string, which uh, we will use to align two multiple sequence alignments. Because, for example, suppose that we need to join this element here with this element here. This is a multiple sequence alignment of three, uh, three sequences. This is a, an alignment of two sequences. And if we want to align these two together, we need to align the two consensus sequences corresponding to each of these. So we also need to keep track of all the consensus sequences for all our multiple sequences alignment. Uh, and so th in this case, this is just a list of strings because each multiple sequence alignment will only have one consensus sequence. Initially, the consensus sequence will be the same as the original sequence because we start with all the sequences uh, separated. But then as we align sequences, we recompute the consensus sequence ta taking into account uh, those alignments. Okay, so now, now that we know how we're going to store the data during the computations, we are going to think about the different functions that we need to, uh, to actually compute the multiple sequence alignment. So first we're going to need to create this distance matrix here. We're going to have to align all pairs of sequences and for each pair of sequences after alignment, we will have to measure the differences between them. So let's decompose this into uh, three functions. One receives the uh, alignment strings after the global alignment and will count, will loop through all the indexes of both of these strings. Note that after the alignment, these strings will have the same length because these are the, the alignment strings and will count one uh, uh, every time it finds a difference. So if at some position i, the alignment string for sequence 1 does not have the same character as that one for sequence 2, either because the, the residues are different or because one of them is a gap, we will count this as a difference. And our distance measure will be the number of differences between the sequences. Uh, now, uh, given two sequences, we will need to align them first 
and then compute the differences. So we can create this function that starts by calling uh, the align function to align the two sequences, obtain the two alignment strings, and then call this one to get the count of the number of differences. And now to create the, the guide tree, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a matrix of zeros that, he, that has this dimension. It has as many rows as the number of sequences we have and as many columns as the number of sequences that we had. And uh, uh, now for each sequence, I accept the last one. We're going to start from this sequence here and go all the way uh, to this one, the one before last. And for each of these, we're going to look at the next sequences. So basically, for the first sequence, we're going to look at the second, third, and so on, and compute all of these pairs. For the second sequence, we're going to start from the third and compute all of these pairs, and all the way down here until we reach the, the sequence that is before the last one, and we compute the distance between that one and the last sequence. So we are computing only this uh, top uh, triangle of the matrix, but then since this is symmetrical, we can also put the same value on the, the corresponding cell just by switching the column and the row. So this is what we do here. We start with each sequence except the last one, each sequence i. Then for each sequence j starting from i plus 1, we are going to put in both of these positions, j i and i j, the result of this alignment difference between the, the two sequences. So this way we fill the distance matrix that will help us get the guide tree, so the right order of uh, uh, aligning all of the sequences. Okay, now uh, in order to do the, the multiple sequence alignment, we don't really need to produce the guide tree, we just need this matrix and then follow the order. For example, we find that these two are very close to each other, we merge these two lines and these two columns and uh, reduce the size of the matrix. And we keep doing this and just following what the matrix is telling. So uh, to uh, be able to do this, we need two things. We need to find the nearest uh, pair in the matrix, that is the smallest distance there. So we're going to start with a large value for the minimum value, for example, the maximum of the matrix plus one. And this ensures that somewhere along the way, we are going to find a smaller value. And if we find in some position of the matrix a value that is smaller than this, we memorize the minimum row and the minimum column. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start the row from the first row all the way except the last one. And also the column, we're going to start from row plus one. So once again, we are only going to look at this top part of the, the matrix. We're going to start from the first row and the second column and look at all of these values. And then at the second row, third column, we look at all the values and so on until we find the smallest one. For example, this one would be an example of the smallest. And we would uh, then have this... Uh, index, which is the row and the column where we found the smallest value. Okay, so this, uh, this we can use now to do one step along the UPGMA algorithm by finding the nearest element. So we have uh, index 1 and index 2 of the, the two sequences or the two elements that are closest together. And now we're going to create a copy of the original matrix. We're going to set the row uh, of index 1 and the column of index 1 to the average of the rows or the columns, because remember that when we merge two elements here on the distance matrix, for example, element 1 and 2, then the distance to all the others will be the average of the distances of the two. So we need to average this row with this row, and this will, we will replace on the top row. And we need to do the same thing for the two first columns and replace on this uh, first column. So we're going to use a, a copy of the matrix 
to compute this by looking at the original, computing the average, and then writing it to uh, the row and the column on the copy. Then we're going to set uh, this uh, uh, value i1, i1 at zero. So this is the, the distance between the, the uh, sequence to itself. And we're going to delete the, the other one, the one of index two. You can do this by using npdelete from the, the new matrix, the uh, index that you want to delete, and the axis. So if you use an axis of zero, you're going along the rows and you're going to delete uh, row I2. If you use axis of one, you're going along the columns and you delete column uh, I2. So you're going to delete both the row and the column because after we merge uh, these two together, we have all the averages here on the first row and now we remove this column from the matrix. So now the matrix becomes smaller and we do the same, this row, sorry, and we do the same thing for the, the second column here and we shrink the size of the matrix. And this is what we need to do for the, uh, the step in the UPGMA algorithm. So but now that we can do these steps, we uh, need to also uh, merge the multiple sequence alignments of these two uh, elements here. So these two multiple sequence alignments must be uh, merged together. To do that, we need to align them. And for that, we need to compute the consensus sequence for each multiple sequence alignment. So let's uh, break this down into uh, two uh, uh, parts. One is just uh, look at a, a specific column in the multiple sequence alignment. Uh, that is all the residues that are aligned there in that position and find out if there is a consensus here. So to simplify, we'll, we will assume that there is a consensus if at least 50% of them have the same symbol and it's not a gap. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this column, create a list with all the residues at this particular column, and then use the mode function from scipy stats. Uh, what the mode function does is returns two arrays, one with just a single element that is the most common element in, the, uh, in this case, in this column of the multiple sequence alignment, and the other is an array with uh, one element, which is the count, an integer value, counting how many times that one occurred. So if the count, uh, which you look at the array and use the, the uh, value zero, is uh, the index zero, because this will only have one uh, element. If this one is smaller than uh, half of the number of sequences, or if the mode, if the, the uh, most common element in the, the, uh, this column is the gap, then we return x. This means that for the consensus sequence, at this position, there is no consensus and we don't care what residue will align here. Otherwise, if we have uh, one symbol that is uh, more, uh, occupies more than half the rows on this column and is not a gap, then we return that particular symbol. This will be the consensus uh, symbol here. And now we can use this function, which computes the consensus symbol for each column, to uh, start with an empty string and then for each column in the multiple sequence alignment we add the consensus for that column. Uh, so this uh, now we can use uh, these uh, consensus strings we can use to align two multiple sequence uh, alignments because each one will be represented by the consensus string and we align the consensus strings. Now, after we align the, the multiple sequence alignments, we will need to merge them into a single uh, multiple sequence alignment. And this may not be trivial because imagine that this was our uh, multiple sequence alignment one. We had these sequences here. So if we find the consensus sequence, uh, this would be uh, the consensus sequence here, except for this gap. This is not present in the consensus se sequence, but it would be A because all of these are A then A again, then this will be an X because there is no consensus here. There are T, C, G, there is none in the majority, and then C and G. 
and this if this is our second alignment this would have uh, um, an a an x here uh, so this is incorrect this should be an x uh, a c a c g so uh, we have um, uh, after the alignment uh, aligning the consensus let's say we have a gap here if we have a, a gap here it means that we will need to insert gaps on these first strings in order to compute the multiple sequence alignment uh, resulting from merging these two because otherwise they would not fit with the other uh, strings so basically in order to merge the two multiple sequence alignments we need to pad all the sequences in each multiple sequence alignment with gaps that we find when we align the consensus sequ uh, se uh, sequences so basically we can do this to pad a multiple sequence alignment given the alignment string for example this one we will create a new uh, multiple sequence alignment with empty strings and we, you can do this by uh, creating uh, a list with an empty string and multiplying by the number of, of uh, elements in the multiple sequence alignment. So this will create a list with uh, uh, lots of empty strings, with as many empty strings as we have uh, here. We can also, we will start by pointing at the current position of the, uh, these uh, strings We'll start at zero and now we're going to uh, iterate through the indexes of the, the alignment and if in the alignment string we find a symbol that is not a gap, then we will put the corresponding symbols of, uh, of this current position into each of the strings of the new multiple sequence alignment and we advance one the current position. So each time we encounter something that is not a gap, we will copy this one to the first string, this one to the second string, this one to the third, and advance one to the second position. And we keep doing that until we find a gap. If we find a gap, then we just add a gap to all of the sequences in the new multiple sequence alignment, and we do not advance one position, so that at the next uh, step, we will again find the correct uh, element there. So this way we can pad each multiple sequence alignment using its alignment string after aligning the consensus and after padding both multiple sequence alignments they will all have the same uh, strings of the same length and we can just concatenate them by adding the two lists together so uh, this will be one list of three strings for one multiple sequence alignment the other of two strings and when we add them we get a list of five strings with the combined multiple sequence alignment. After doing this, we can recompute the consensus, uh, which now becomes uh, uh, has to take into account all of the strings in the new multiple sequence alignment. Okay, so one of the things that we're going to, to uh, need to do for uh, the multiple sequence alignment list, the consensus list and the names is when we uh, do something like this of merging uh, two elements we do it on the matrix but we also have to do it on the uh, the list of multiple sequence alignments the list of uh, names and the list of consensus and uh, in all of these cases the the mechanics are the the same we are going to create a new list uh, we are going to uh, when we find uh, the item at index 1, so we, we want to merge index 1 and index 2 into the position of index 1. So when we find uh, the item at index 1, we have to put there on the new list, not the original one that was at index 1, but the new element with the combination. So in the case of multiple sequence alignments, this would be the new alignment uh, merged, in the case of the names, it would be a new list with the names uh, joined, put together in the same list. Uh, in the case of consensus, it would be the new uh, consensus alignment. But this is the one that we have to put at position I1. At position I2, we will not put anything. So basically, we're going to create an empty list. And then for each index in the old list, we check if it is index 1. If it is index 1, then it is this element that we will put 
on the new list uh, in that position. If it is not index 2, then we will put the element on of the old list. So this is what we're going to do and uh, uh, um, basically running through the old list, putting everything in the new list except i2 because we check if it's not i2 and if it's i1 instead of putting the element on the old list we put the new element that we created okay so now uh, let's see how this works by uh, i'm going to show the full function for computing one step in the the uh, cluster uh, alignment so following the same algorithm that cluster uses for the progressive alignment we're going to uh, receive here the matrix with all the pairwise distances, the list of lists with all the multiple sequence alignments, the list of strings with all the consensus uh, so far, the names, uh, the gap penalty, and the function for uh, matching the, the residues. We're going to start by looking at the, the matrix, finding the uh, two indexes that we're going to merge together, and obtaining the new matrix after merging. So this step will identify which uh, line and row of the matrix we need to merge together, uh, compute those averages and shrink the matrix by one uh, row and one column. Now we're going to look at the consensus sequences of these two uh, indexes and we're going to align them using this gap penalty, this match function, and obtain the alignment strings and the score for these consensus uh, sequences. And now we're going to compute a new list of multiple sequence, uh, a new uh, uh, multiple sequence alignment by padding the multiple sequence alignment of the first index here using the first alignment string. So this will put all the gaps necessary uh, so that this multiple sequence alignment has the correct number of characters in the, in the right position. We will do the same with the second multiple sequence alignment, the i2, but using its own alignment string. So basically these uh, two uh, function calls will do this step here for each of the multiple sequence alignments. So after we do that, we will have both multiple sequence alignments with the exact same uh, uh, length, all of the strings, and the gaps placed in the correct positions. So now we can just add the two lists, and when you sum two lists, you get a list with all of these elements uh, in order. And this will be the new multiple sequence alignment that we're going to put on position of index 1, after, and then discard the one on index 2, because this joins uh, the ones that were previously on index 1 and index 2. We're going to uh, um, update the uh, list of multiple sequence alignments by combining uh, the elements, so calling this function here. And we're going to say that we want to combine the elements of these two indexes using this new multiple sequence alignment. So since this one combines the alignments of i1 and i2, and this function, what it does is replace the position at i1 with this new uh, multiple sequence alignment and discards the one at i2. So we have this new list of MSAs, of multiple sequence alignments, which merged these two and discarded the one that is no longer used. We're going to do the same for the consensus sequences. So we're going to discard the i2, replace the i1 with the new consensus computed from this new multiple sequence alignment. And we're also going to update the names by combining uh, the names of uh, i1 and i2. We're going to just concatenate these two lists, put that in i1 and discard the one in i2. So by doing this, the matrix will shrink down in one row and one column. The list of uh, multiple sequence alignments will reduce by one by combining two of them into a single one. The consensus will also uh, lose one element and the names will also lose one element by combining the names of the other two. 
So what we need to do now, this is a single step in the cluster algorithm. What we need to do now is to, uh, in order to bring everything together, we will have a, a list of sequences and a list of names, the gap penalty and the match function that we're going to use with the, with the, the Blossom 62 and including that X character so that this uh, consensus works well. We're going to create an initial list of multiple sequence alignments that uh, contains for each multiple sequence alignment just the original sequence. So this is a list of lists and each list only has a string which is the original sequence here. But this is what will then be joined together into larger and larger MSAs as we go progressing along the, the, the iterations of the, this computation. We are also going to create a list of strings with the consensus sequences, but this initially is just the original sequences because each, each of these multiple sequence alignment is just a single sequence, it's not even an alignment yet, and the consensus is just that sequence. The names will be a list of lists of names, but each of these lists initially will have a single name because all of the uh, sequences are still separated, they were not aggregated together. Now we're going to compute the matrix using the, the guide tree matrix function that does all the pairwise uh, alignments and computes the differences between the sequences. And now, while we have more than one element in any of these uh, lists, because they will all shrink in parallel, uh, either the MSA, the consensus or the names, it doesn't matter, we will update our lists, the, the matrix, the, the MSA, consensus and, name, uh, and names uh, here with uh, the um, uh, result of the, the step in the, the cluster algorithm. So note that this one will combine all the elements. All of these lists will shrink by one and it will return the, these new lists. So when we do this, we will update all of our lists with the result of this step. And all of these will have one less element than they had before. And we can do this until we only have one element left. When we reach the end, we can uh, uh, output the first of the, the first element in the MSA's list, which will now be a list of all the, sequence, uh, of all the sequences correctly aligned and the first element in the names list, which will now be a list of all the names joined together uh, in that uh, first element. Okay, so to test this, let's load the, um, the sequences from the FASTA file. So we have the names and the sequences. We're going to simplify the names to get just the, the species. And now we're going to do the cluster algorithm on these sequences and these names with a gap penalty of two and using that match function we have from the, the Blossom matrix. And this would be the result. The multiple sequence alignment is a list of strings with uh, all of these sequences aligned and the names will be a list of names with the correct order uh, with the, in the same order as the sequences so that we know that this sequence is Homo sapiens, this sequence is uh, the chimpanzee and so forth. Okay, so now that we have the multiple sequence alignment, we can build the uh, phylogenetic tree. We're going to start by creating a, a matrix of differences, but instead of aligning uh, pairwise each of the uh, pairs of sequences, we're going to do the same thing, but just counting the differences between these alignment sequences. Note that when we have the multiple sequence alignment, all of these are already alignments. They already have the gaps uh, in the correct places and so on. So we just need to count the differences between all the different pairs in the multiple sequence alignment. So this will be left as an exercise for you to implement this part, the difference matrix computed from the multiple sequence alignment. Uh, and then we need to step through uh, the UPGMA algorithm going from the smaller, the, the closest ones and moving onwards and joining the, uh, these uh, uh, sequences together. So what we're going to, to do is we're going to start with this uh, list of tuples. 
which has the name of each sequence in the same order as we have in the multiple sequence alignment and a zero. Uh, this zero will store this second uh, value in the tuple, this uh, number, will store the length of the branch so far for this element. So in the beginning, we the tuples all, all have zero because uh, the there is no branch yet. We have all of our uh, um, sequences separated and we still did not join them in the phylogenetic tree. But now what we need to do is we keep joining them and compute the correct size of the branch and create the NAWIC uh, format uh, descriptor for that tree. So what we're going to do is to use the same function from uh, uh, before, the UPGMA step, which takes the matrix, finds out the two that are more similar and outputs a new matrix that uh, has um, uh, uh, fewer one fewer column and one fewer row because uh, the this step merged those two rows uh, and columns and now we're going to uh, uh, use as uh, the um, uh, distance between uh, as the branch size for this uh, uh, part of the tree the branch for each of these elements will be one half of the distance between them. So we go look up at the original matrix. We still have there the distance between them. We, we divide by two, and this will be the size of each branch in the uh, this part in this step in UPGMA. Uh, that's why UPGMA creates uh, these branches all equal. Uh, every time it does a bifurcation because it simply divides the distance between the two elements and puts one half uh, of uh, that in the in each branch and now we're going to uh, op to look at the the list of these tuples and get the element of index one and element of index two this will get will give us the string for that element that initially is a name but eventually it can be a branch with those parentheses that the NAWIC format uses and it will also give us the length of the branches so far uh, for that element so we have here the uh, the size of uh, um, the size of the branch if we are looking at the sub part of the tree initially this is zero but uh, eventually, as we keep adding elements to the tree, this starts uh, becoming longer. So now we create a new uh, entry for the, the, this NAWIC format, uh, which is this string. We can use the, the F string in Python, where we're going to put between parentheses, uh, separated by a comma, the name of the branch. Note that the name can be the name of the sequence, or it can be a, a former branch, with the parentheses and the length of that branch. The length will be one half of the distance between the two elements minus what uh, was already uh, uh, before uh, used before in this uh, 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 part of the tree. So uh, if we already have uh, some sub elements here that have some branch size, we will have to subtract that so that the total length will be uh, this uh, value here and the same thing for the other uh, part of the of this uh, branch in the tree so in the beginning we will have uh, one uh, name and then just the half of the distance between the two because b1 will be zero and then the same thing for the other name of the sequence but when we start grouping uh, previous branches then we will already have some uh, length there because now we're going to combine these two elements use the same function as before and we're going to combine into index one the index one and index two and we'll uh, use this tuple here which uh, for the name it has the description of the the node of the tree of this part of the tree and for the value of the the branch length so far it has this one half of the distance between the two so this tuple will now replace uh, the tuple at index one the tuple at index two will be discarded because it was this other part that we joined here 
and uh, uh, this will create the new list of uh, elements for the, the NAWIC format. And now we return the new matrix and this new list and we can bring everything together as before just by uh, creating first the differences matrix with the multiple sequence alignment. Then we create the initial uh, NAWIC list by appending tuples with each name of our species and the zero because they start uh, as uh, uh, separate uh, elements here. And now, while we still have elements to join, so the length is greater than one, we update the matrix and the, the NAWIC list with a single step. And we keep doing that until we only have one NAWIC string. And now we go for the first element of the, the NAWIC list, which is a tuple. It has the string and the branches, uh, the length so far. And we take the first element of that, which is just the string, and we add this semicolon at the end uh, because this is the, the format for the, uh, the uh, NAWIC uh, string. So this is an example we have. We started for, uh, with Homo sapiens and uh, chimpanzee here. And when we joined the two together into a single node, we added this parenthesis and one half the difference between them for each branch. And now when we were going to add this, we added to, I think it's a, a lemur here, and we now have a, a part of the tree uh, created here. And we kept doing this, joining together, uh, beginning always with the, the closest ones, and then merging these subtrees and adding always there the, the branch length that was uh, left over uh, from uh, the, the previous length already used and the half of the distance between the, these nodes. So this is, you can uh, take this um, string, this string in NAWIC format, and use, for example, uh, ETE toolkit at this site. You can just paste there and you see the, the uh, phylogenetic tree here. Now, this part on top, these are all uh, mammals. Uh, these are uh, primates and then we have elephants and so on. And this part here, they are fish and I think some some uh, uh, crustacean and, uh, from the sea and things like that. So there is a clear uh, difference uh, between these two. Uh, you can also use uh, the tree viewer at, at NCBI. By the way, there is uh, there are two sequences here or two pairs uh, that uh, have the same distance. So you see there are two twos there. Uh, and so when we create the NAWIC, uh, the, the tree here, we have Homo sapiens and chimps separated uh, with a, a branch length of one either way, because uh, they have a distance of two, but then they also have a distance of two to this other uh, one here. So this branch will now be zero, and we actually have a branch of three uh, at the same level. This works fine for, for this uh, viewer at NCBI, but this one at ETE Toolkit adds a small space there and misaligns uh, these. Uh, but in any case, the, the, the length of, the, of these branches uh, should be correct. Uh, it's just that there is a small gap there because it cannot deal well with the, with the zero. By the way, these ones that appear here, this is the support for the branches and we're going to see this uh, later on when we do bootstrapping to see how uh, how reliable the the tree is but uh, it can have uh, it can happen that you find uh, less support when you repeat the the computation of the trees uh, with bootstrapping you can find some branches only uh, say 10 percent of the time or 90 percent of the time and so on and uh, this uh, viewer allows to uh, to see that. In this case, I only used one tree, so there is a one uh, everywhere here. Okay, so to sum up uh, this part, this is a mix of uh, uh, tutorial and exercise. The main goal is that you understand in detail the data structures that we are using, so how we can store the different uh, uh, elements here, the multiple sequence alignments, the names, the consensus uh, uh, sequences and so on, and also understand the algorithms in detail. 
uh, I would recommend that you try to implement as much uh, as possible on your own these different functions. There are some functions that are a bit trickier and I provide the code on the slides. Others, I leave uh, just a description for you to implement, but I will place the full resolution for this, so the, the full code in uh, the, um, uh, the course site, so that you have access to uh, all the code if you get stuck somewhere. But uh, please try to implement as much as possible uh, on your own, because this helps you think about the algorithms and really understand the algorithms in detail.